the subject is intuitional practice and its necessity. Sadhana, intuitional practice is waging war against infinite prakriti and becoming free of her subjugation by winning this, this war. Prakriti is a unique force that controls everything, even natural phenomena. Sadhana or intuitional practice therefore means achieving supremacy over this all-controlling unique force, Prakriti. It was seen earlier that consciousness Purusha and Prakriti are inseparable. Prakriti, which was the controlling entity of Purusha before the war, comes under Purusha control on being defeated in, this, in the war. Consciousness or Purusha thus becomes the master of the all-controlling unique force with the help of sadhana or intuitional practice. Due to its victory in the war against Prakriti, it leaves Prakriti unable to exercise any influence over Purusha. Sadhana or intuitional practice will make one the processor of immense supernatural powers. Sadhana begets supernatural power. What its correct and proper usage has to be determined. The supreme rank of Brahma is non-qualified or nirgun. Where Purusha and Prakriti are together, yet Purusha or consciousness is more prominent and Prakriti is not able to qualify Purusha. Prakriti being feebler in Nirgun Brahma, non-qualified entity could be driven, driven about by Purus consciousness. He could lord it over Prakriti. Yet Purusha consciousness does not do so. In the absence of Prakriti, Prakriti's influence over consciousness, the wish to lord it over Prakriti will not be aroused in Purusha. Such a desire in consciousness will only arise upon being influenced by Prakriti, which will only be possible when consciousness becomes weaker than Prakriti. Hence, even the desire to lord it over Prakriti will arise only out of the weakness of consciousness which would bring Purusha under Prakriti's influence and render Purusha incapable of lording. Consciousness or Purusha is thus never able to lord it over Prakriti. Unit consciousness gets released from the bondage of Prakriti gradually. The use of the Purusha begot then power of sadhana for lording it over Prakriti would be inviting back Prakriti's influence. It is the qualifying influence of Prakriti only which creates the desire for the use of power. Hence, by wishing to use or by actually using this power, one voluntarily gets under the control of Prakriti. This results in all one's efforts to conquer Prakriti with the help of sadhana or intuitional practice being counteracted by going under the control of Prakriti. There is no emancipation for such a person. One can never gain freedom from the influence of Prakriti in this way. People use the power that comes from sadhana in order to win the admiration of others. The exhibition of one's supernatural powers would make others extort, respect, or even worship one. Others would look upon one as a great devotee or sadhak. This is the only reason behind the display of one's powers. A desire to command respect and devotion from others is only being entrapped by vanity or man and pride mother of Avidya Maya. The use of power for such objects is the pursuit of Avidya Maya and the pursuit of Avidya Maya leads to degradation. Hence, 
Any use of supernatural power brings one under the control of Avidya Maya, which inevitably leads to a fall and to degradation. Many consider it proper to use the power begotten of sadhana to alleviate suffering, for instance, to provide relief from a serious disease. There is hardly any logic behind it. Everyone has to bear the consciousness of their actions and disease. Suffering or calamities are only different forms of suffering, those consequences. Bhagavan God is benevolent and it is according to his laws that one has to suffer the consequences of one's actions. It is through this suffering that one can take a lesson to obtain, abstain from everything. That is the purpose behind God's making one suffer the consequences. Interference in this divine law with the help of supernatural powers acquired through sadhana is not benevolent. The reaction to one's actions, karma will have to be experienced and it is not within the authority of even the greatest of devotees or sadhakas. To stop this, this may at best be able to postpone the suffering, but the performer of the actions will have to suffer the remaining consequences and may have to seek rebirth for this. As a punishment, suffering from a serious disease may awaken the desire for sadhana or intuitional practice to achieve emancipation. But many strained and ignorant disciples deprive people of the opportunity of arousing this awakening by relieving them of their suffering with the help of their sadhana begotten supernatural powers. Supernatural powers. They in fact do greater disservice than service to the sufferer. The use of sadhana begotten power has to be regarded as a blasphemy. For is it not challenging the supremacy of God by neutralizing the effectiveness of the laws of his nature with the help of supernatural powers. One may cross a river by walking on water, may walk through raging fire, or may even perform the miracle of curing one of an incurable disease. One would invariably be using one's powers to nullify the nature or dharma of water and fire and to interfere with the law of prakriti which makes one suffer reactions of all one's actions. Anyone walking on water in a river must be drowned. Fire has the property of burning whatsoever, whatever may, be, may come in its contact. Similarly, one has to bear the consequences of one's actions. To evade these effects is to challenge the authority of God it is not merely challenging but demolishing the very constitution of creation and its laws. There could be no greater blasphemy. Every action will have a reaction and that has to be experienced. Use of supernatural powers is also an action. It is not only an action but a blasphemous action. An evil deed, one is bound to suffer the consequences of such an action and as long as one has not exhausted the experiencing of all the potential reactions, sanskara, one cannot obtain freedom from the bondage of prakriti. Hence the use of supernatural powers bestowed by intuitional practice is not justified under any circumstances. It invariably leads to downfall and degradation and so it is essential to refrain from the temptation of using such powers. Emancipation can be achieved by intuitional practice, sadhana, and so there must be a special technique for it. This can only be taught 
by one who knows the technique it is therefore necessary for learning intuitional practice to find a teacher who knows this technique does it then mean that a preceptor or guru is absolutely necessarily necessary for learning intuitional practice and obtaining emancipation or can one learn it oneself a man in prison with his hands and feet shackled will never be able to set himself free in spite of his best efforts unless someone else opens the prison gates and removes his shackles similarly people have been shackled by prakriti and imprisoned in this wide prison the world it would never be possible for them to become free without the help of another person besides this it is not possible for everyone to learn an art all by themselves one must have someone who can reach them or whom they can imitate imitate such a person from whom one can learn an art is a preceptor intuitional practice or sadhana is also an art and has to be learned from a preceptor hence emancipation is not possible without a preceptor or guru a guru is always a prime necessity for obtaining emancipation one who is in bondage cannot release others from bondage one with shackled hands and feet cannot remove the shackles of others hence the person who is not emancipated cannot give emancipation to others only a mukt purush emancipated person is capable of becoming a preceptor a person can be called emancipated only when he or she has obtained freedom from the qualifying influence of prakriti the only entity which is completely free from the influence of prakriti is the non qualified supreme entity nirgun brahma and it alone can be called really emancipated the nirgun brahma or the non qualified entity can however never be instrumental in giving emancipation to others it cannot in the complete absence of the influence of prakriti have even the will to wish for the emancipation of others only that person can be a preceptor who by his or her sadhana or intuitional practice has attained the supreme rank but also has at his or her own instance taken human form again for a predetermined period for the welfare of living beings such a person will be under the influence of prakriti as long as he or she maintains his or her physical body and on his or her relinquishing it with death or he or she will return to the supreme rank the non qualified supreme entity the qualified supreme entity bhagwan is emancipated and so is the preceptor guru that shows there is no difference between the preceptor and bhagwan he or she cannot be any other entity except the qualified supreme entity or sagun brahma he or she is the sagun brahma or bhagwan incarnate the wish of the qualified supreme entity or sagun brahma is to obtain emancipation for each of its units and it is with the intention that it brought forth the creation sagun brahma is formless it cannot be seen or heard such an entity cannot help humans to achieve emancipation it has to assume a human form to help its units and that is the form of a preceptor guru the preceptor guru is bhagwan incarnate there is not the slightest doubt about this although it is difficult to find a mukt purush or sad guru or great preceptor it is not necessary to search for one in jungles mountains and caves in accordance with popular belief the purpose of the qualified supreme entity in manifesting the creation is to obtain emancipation for each one of its units in order to fulfill 
this purpose it will have to appear before anyone who has a yearning for emancipation this yearning or state of mental uneasiness caused by the intense desire for emancipation heralds the arrival of the opportune moment the qualified supreme entity in the form of a great preceptor will appear to those who have reached this opportune moment by virtue of their intense desire for liberation if this were not so the purpose of their creation would not be served it would be merely a trap and the creator the qualified supreme entity would become the cause of bondage cause of bondage hence to wander through jungles and over mountains in quest of a great preceptor is futile what is most essential is to kindle in one's heart a yearning an intense desire for emancipation it is necessary to know what the qualities of a great preceptor are so that even the ignorant may recognize the person in the position and display of supernatural or divine powers the characteristic of the great preceptor sir guru a great preceptor is an emancipated person and is master of all the supernatural powers but does one have to display them to be recognized as a preceptor we saw earlier that the use of supernatural powers under any circumstances leads to degradation as they bring the user under the control of avidya maya but avidya maya cannot attract or have any influence over a liberated person such a one will not be influenced by avidya maya under any circumstances thus the person who claims to be a great preceptor because of supernatural powers or who displays them is only an impostor such a person is not emancipated and can never be li never liberate others such a person should be avoid avoided like a venomous serpent the display and possession of supernatural or divine powers are not the qualities by which a great preceptor can be recognized a great preceptor is an emancipated person a perceptor preceptor is free from the influence of prakriti avidya maya cannot entrap a sadguru the six enemies calm that is longing for worldly objects krodh that is anger lobe that is avarice mo that is attraction mother that is pride matsari that is envy and the eight fetters lajja or same bhay or fear grina or hatred shanka or doubt kula or high descent shila or complex of culture man vanity and jugupsa that is hypocrisy and backbiting have no effect on an emancipated preceptor that is sadguru in order to follow the dharma or nature of creation a sadguru lives in complete harmony with vidya maya and practices vivek and vairagya discrimination and proper use of worldly things such a person alone is a great preceptor or sadguru intuitional practice sadhana has to be learned from a great preceptor sadguru and emancipation is obtained by its systematic practice nothing can be achieved by merely depending on the preceptor without carrying out intuitional practice or sadhana everyone should carry out intuitional practice emancipation is not possible without it some people have the you know erroneous impression and that they do not have to make an effort and that they will attain emancipation due to the grace of the preceptor it is true that liberation is not possible without the great preceptor's kindness but one is mistaken if one thinks that liberation can be obtained without of effort 
one must deserve kindness and then alone will be will it be bestowed it is never showered or an undeserving disciple to deserve the grace of the great sadguru one has to follow the system of intentional practice with devotion and faith and not assume that the great preceptor will freely give everything without any effort on the part of the disciple other people think that since they are the disciple of a great preceptor and since the sadguru has come to elevate the fallen the preceptor will take them all along when living in the same way as a coward gathers together all grazing cattle before leaving the pasture at dusk this way of thinking is not correct a great preceptor does not come into this world to herd his disciples like cattle the great preceptor comes to liberate people to elevate them to divinity people must make a sincere effort to carry out intentional practice that is sadhana idle independence on the preceptor cannot obtain emancipation when one first starts intentional practice problems arise and present obstacles to its pursuit sadhana or intentional practice is the effort to free oneself from the bondage of prakriti this subjugation is maintained due to the self created distortions in the mind in order to obtain liberation the mind has to be restored to its natural state by removing these distortions it was shown earlier that these are the reactions of one's actions and cannot be removed without being experienced so emancipation is not possible until one has completely experienced the remaining reactions of one's previous lives ordinary people experience these reactions in the normal way and if any still remain when they die they are reborn to exhaust them those who pursue intentional practice do not want to be born again to experience their remaining reactions in their eagerness to attain emancipation quickly they has to hasten to exhaust the balance of reactions in this life so they should regard problems as a good sign as they speed up the exhaust exhaustion of the remaining reactions sadhana is the effort to free oneself from the qualifying influence of prakriti avidya maya is only a quality and that too has to be renounced if a tenant has been occupying a house for a very long time it will be extremely difficult to suddenly evict him by force particularly if he has been treated as a respectable tenant for a long time he will never be leave he will never leave the house willingly and will place all sorts of obstacles in your path you will have to fight against all his maneuvers and only when you have completely defeated him will the bully allow you to enter the house similarly as one has been at the mercy of avidya maya for many lives it will not leave easily when one starts in tuition practice like the bully tenant avidya maya will throw all possible obstacles across one's path when one tries to destroy its influence sadhana or intentional practice as taught by a great preceptor is the way to remove avidya maya only success in sadhana can make avidya maya lose its hold so the beginning of true sadhana is marked by great resistance from avidya maya which throw the obstacles it creates tries to compel one to give up sadhana in its attempt to subdue avidya maya sadhana will naturally meet resistance from the evil force of avidya maya obstacles in sadhana or intentional practices should be regarded as an indication of one success in one's attempt to remove avidya maya obstacles are not created by god or the great preceptor sadguru 
as they wish every one of the units to become emancipated like themselves. They are created by Prakriti, against whom one is waging war. If one is to win, Prakriti has to be defeated with that weapon of sadhana, against which Avidya Maya depend, defends itself by placing obstacles in one's way. Obstacles in sadhana should be regarded as good sign, indicating that the influence of Avidya Maya is beginning to win. The qualified supreme entity or Sakun Brahma has given each of its units a fully reflected consciousness. It manifests creation and evolves humanity in it to enable the unit to carry out intuitional practice and attain emancipation. Other living beings do not possess a fully reflected consciousness and are capable neither of performing sadhana nor of attaining emancipation. Unit consciousness is fully reflected in all humans being and thus everyone has an equal right to practice sadhana. No other living beings till they are evolved to the stage of human beings have the capacity to perform intuitional practice. As everyone has an equal right to do sadhana, it is necessary for Sagun Brahma, that is a qualified supreme entity, to reach everyone as a great preceptor. But this does not happen because due to people's lack of interest in achieving emancipation, they are not able to claim their right to sadhana. The great preceptor is available only to those who have an earnest desire for emancipation. For them, only the opportune moment has arrived and they alone can claim their right to sadhana and find a great preceptor Sadhguru. Human beings have the power of discrimination as they possess a fully reflected unit consciousness. They can discriminate between good and evil and choose to live a good life. The desire for emancipation is good, but as every action or desire has to have a cause, so, this desire also has to be aroused within human mind beings. Developing an earnest desire for emancipation or earning the right to do sadhana therefore depends on one's efforts. The great preceptor cannot be accused of partiality because of teaching intuitional practice only to those who really deserve it. Sagund Brahma wants to liberate everyone, but one must earn the right to do sadhana by one's own efforts. As although all human beings have a fully reflected consciousness, many are not able to develop the earnest desire for emancipation. God cannot be blamed for human indifference towards attaining emancipation, which prevents one from finding a great preceptor. It is everyone's duties dharma to create the desire for emancipation as that is the wish of the Lord and that is why the Lord made the vast creation. The aim of Sagun Brahma is to liberate each of its units and that is the only reason it made this vast creation everyone will gain emancipation sooner or later as that is the wish of the Lord. It may happen soon or may come about after an indefinite period. The only way to gain emancipation is through sadhana and so everyone will have to begin sadhana one day in their search for liberation from the bondage of creation. The wise should therefore start sadhana as soon as possible and gain emancipation quickly. They realize that to delay is to suffer unnecessarily under the bondage of creation which is not their permanent home. To regard a transit camp as one's home and suffer the rigorous and difficulties of the camp is foolish. Knowing that this is not the final goal and that one has no right to stay here permanently, it seems sensible to make an effort to leave as soon as possible. Everyone has to reach his or her goal sometime. It is imperative for everyone to achieve emancipation quickly by practicing sadhana, this is our permanent duty.